Today I'm canning pork patties, and you can use this video as a guide, but before you can anything, be sure to educate yourself about proper canning procedures. Uh, the way that I'm going to do this today is an adaptation on the Bernardin Canning Company's recipe for Quebec pork meatballs. And if you've canned uh, ground beef and you didn't like it, be sure to give this a try because it doesn't turn out anything like ground beef. The uh, meat holds its texture very well and it doesn't have that like dog food smell and all. Uh, so I'm going to cut up a uh, pork butt and grind my own uh, pork. But if you don't have a grinder, you can just buy ground pork and do it that way. So I'm just going to cut this up into strips and I, um, I don't suppose it matters all that much exactly how I cut this but I wash the pork butt first and I uh, splurged and I bought myself a meat grinder and I got it off of Walmart's website it was only $99 I've used it a few times now and so far it's worked very well so I figured if uh, I could make this process faster and easier I'd be more likely to do it. If you want to grind your own pork, uh, use a pork butt, sometimes called a Boston butt. Uh, don't worry about the fat in it. You actually need that fat to um, make this ground pork turn out right. And you can save a lot of money by grinding your own meat. I got this pork butt for $1.58 a pound and uh, if I bought it already ground, it would be $3.29 a pound. So a meat grinder can quickly pay for itself. Now I bought one of those little metal hand crank meat grinders from the thrift store and that works, but it takes a lot of time and effort to use that. So if you can pick one of those up pretty cheap, and one of my subscribers said that she uh, bought a Norpro, I think it was, meat grinder. It's a plastic one, but she said it works great. And I read the reviews on it, and everybody just raves about that little meat grinder. I think it's $25. She said they went out and got some pork butts and browned them up. And that little grinder paid for itself in one, one trip there. There's a bone in these pork butts, and that's what I'm cutting around right now. Okay, I've cut the meat up into strips, and I'm going to feed them through the electric grinder. And this thing's kind of loud, so I'm going to turn the sound down so you won't have to hear it. It's about the, it's the same as a vacuum cleaner. Uh, and uh, like I said, uh, one of these can pay for themselves with the savings in the meat, and you can eat better as well. I just... Uh, ground down a uh, sirloin tip. And I got it for less than cheap hamburger. So that's how this works. I bought this off of Walmart's website for $99 and uh, it's a Weston, I don't remember the name of the rest of it, but um, it does a good job and cleanup isn't all that bad. This, this section here comes off and you just clean that out. Okay, this is what I ended up with from one pork butt. This recipe calls for 4.4 pounds of ground pork and from that you could get 8 pints of uh, the patties. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring out the uh, pork and I'm putting it into bags and putting it into the refrigerator until I'm ready to use it. I'm going to can three pork butts today. So, uh, you know, you don't want to let meat sit out for very long. So this package here is going to be enough for uh, one recipe. And I still have enough here for another. Okay, I got all three of those pork butts ground up, and I ended up with enough for five batches of these patties. Uh, there's four and a half pounds in each one of these packages, and as I went along, 
or put it in the plastic bags and put it in the refrigerator. You know, you don't want to have uh, big piles of meat sitting out uh, all day long. So, take the four and a half pounds of ground pork and two onions, which I count that as two cups of onions. And what I did was I went ahead and chopped up all the onions that I will need and put them in five pint jars. It's two cups. And two chopped cloves of garlic. Two tablespoons of dried parsley, two teaspoons of salt, and a teaspoon of pepper. And just mix that up thoroughly and shape it into patties. Okay, now I'm making the patties, and for this I'm using a regular uh, size canning jar lid and a lid from a plastic bowl. And I just take some of the ground pork and smush it into the lid and this pork is pretty lean. I tested one of the patties and uh, they didn't shrink much that's why I'm using the regular size lid. If there was more fat in it uh, you could probably do this with a wide mouth lid and then the patties would shrink down enough so that they would fit in your jar and for this I'm going to use one and a half si uh, pint size jars and Sarah, thank you so much for telling me about that. Uh, if y'all don't know it, Lowe's has the one and a half pint size jars for sale. So yesterday I went down there and picked up a couple cases. And I think uh, that size jar is going to be perfect for these. So just keep going until you have all of your patties made up. Okay, now just fry up the patties. And I've had this uh, little griddle here that I use for things like this. Comes in real handy with canning because you do a, a lot at one time. And this is just some cheap thing I picked up at Walmart a long time ago. I think they're still less than $20. I'm just going to brown these on both sides. And then can them up. Okay, I've browned the patties on both sides, and also want to mention that when you're canning ground meat, it is not recommended to just take the ground meat, cram it in the jar, and can it that way. Uh, you could uh, create density problems. Uh, it, the heat may not be able to penetrate to the center of the jar if you do that. So it's always recommended to cook uh, ground meat first before you can it, neither cook it so that it'll be in crumbles or um, can it in meatballs or into patties, but don't cram a jar full of brown meat and can it that way. Also, you could bake these in the oven if you wanted to. I just want a little bit of brownness on mine. And I am cooking these until they are just about done. Um, I don't want a lot of raw meat going into my jars because uh, I would rather cook as much grease out of them as I can or as much air out of them as I can. Uh, you can eliminate a lot of problems with your canning if you uh, cook your foods first. And they don't end up overcooked either. Okay, now I'm ready to can. I have my beef bouillon boiling. I have my lids and rings at a simmer. And I have my jars hot and ready. I take a hot jar. And I have the patties in the oven staying warm because I don't like for anything going into my jars to be cold or at room temperature even. And then I fill the jar with the bouillon to within one inch of the top.
And there really aren't any air bubbles to poke around in there with, so you could just shake it, get any air bubbles out that way. Then wipe the rim of the jar clean. Add a hot lid and a hot ring and tighten it firmly. Then I set it in the water bath canner to stay warm until I have all the jars full. If you're new to canning, you've probably heard that you should put the lids on fingertip tight. And believe me, that term is very misleading. Those lids need to be on pretty tight. And if you're not sure of the correct tightness, the Ball Canning Company sells a tool that you can use to tighten the lids with. And you'll see they're, they're tight. It's not, not just a loose fingertip tight thing. What I'm doing is the correct tightness. Okay, now that I have all the jars full, I'm going to take them out of the water bath canner where I've been keeping them warm and put them in the pressure canner. All meats have to be processed in a pressure canner. By the way, that broth, I made 14 cups and it worked out perfectly. There was just a little bit left over. Then I put water in my pressure canner. Then I put the lid on my pressure canner. And the reason that I don't heat my jars in my pressure canner is because maybe mine has personality when I, um, if that pot gets hot, I have a hard time getting this lid on there. So that's why I use my water bath canner for that. Okay, now I'm ready to process the jars. Always follow your manufacturer's directions for your canner. Uh, process the jars uh, pints for 75 minutes, quarts for 90 minutes. Since I'm using the one and a half pint jars, I'm going to process for the 90 minutes. If you live at high altitudes, then you need to adjust the pressure to suit your altitude. Okay, when the processing time was complete, I turned off the heat and let the canner sit for at least 30 minutes. Now I'm going to remove the jars and set them on the, on the towel on the counter to cool. Tomorrow, I will remove the rings, wash the jars, write port patties on the top, and the date that I canned them. Now, I'm sure that somebody's going to ask if they could just dry can these patties rather than go through all that trouble of boiling some broth. <laughs> and I've never dry canned any of these patties, but I have dry canned hamburger patties a little over three years ago. You see, I'm ahead of the curve on some things. And... I know a lot of people are canning with survival in mind these days, and um, but I've been canning all of my life with eating in mind, and I just don't find a jar like this acceptable. Uh, this is the way it should be. It's, everything's covered with liquid. It has a proper head space. It has a minimal amount of uh, grease in the jar. The, this one is protected from drying out, and it won't discolor, whereas this one... You have the top hamburger patty sitting up there in the air. It has it's turned a dark brown over the years. You have the second patty sitting there. It has been saturated in grease for all these years. And the bottom two are in the liquid. They're probably in pretty good shape. So who wants to eat the top two patties? Guess who would have to eat them? Me, because I always eat the worst of whatever I cook. And I'm not gonna put that on somebody else. So if you're the type that you would eat the bottom two and shove the top two off on somebody else, this might not be a problem to you. <laughs> but I'm not eating that. Uh, and I also know that a lot of people have it in their heads that, uh, you know, if they were starving, that this would be delicious. Uh, and I tell you, I've been through some hard times in my life, and at one point, the only thing that we had in the house to eat was a bag of potatoes. And we ate nothing but uh, potato soup for an entire week. And the fact that that was all we had to eat didn't make it taste any better. I don't want to sound like I wasn't grateful for having it. I was, but 
I mean, seriously, it didn't make it taste all that much better. <laughs> Just the fact that that was all we had. So, um, you need to stop and think about what you're doing to yourself out there. Uh, take a little extra time, a little extra effort, and, and turn your food into something that you would enjoy eating. Uh, it doesn't take that much more time or effort. Uh, I just don't understand uh, what's the rush. So I just thought I'd put put a word in about that. And I'm sorry this video is running so long and um, I really didn't have time to film it and edit it the way that I normally do. So probably 75% of you are gone already <laughs> and the other 25% are probably asleep. <laughs> But uh, uh, I had a couple people ask me to do this video, and uh, I was—I have—I still have those other pork butts to can, so uh, that's why I've put it out here this way. So that's how to can pork patties. I hope it helps.